Hello. It has been a long time since I've made videos at this point. If you're watching this back in the future without context, this will be very meaningless to you. But to those who have asked for more videos from me since seeing me start playing again, thank you for the messages, and yeah, I think it's about time now. I've missed making videos, and it seems at least a few people here and there have missed watching them. I did start recording this, intending for it to be a guide video of sorts, or at least a mechanic explanation video, but it's been so long I have to comment on some of the context of where I left my channel realistically. It feels fairly odd if I don't touch on that at all, especially because the gap is somewhat relevant to how I got to this conclusion in the first place. So I had quit back in 2021, that is why the video stopped, and I came back after about 10 months. And in that time frame, a lot of the game had shifted in terms of meta and account building, just because of new items being added more than anything, so I had to, to a large degree, relearn a lot of the game, figure out how all the new stuff worked and how that changed what I knew before in terms of what was or was not correct to do and to build towards. So when I left my account, I was built as a mid-spending female inf cav player basically. I, I ran this formation, something like this, uh, two lines. The game however in terms of PvP meta, especially for commander damage builds like this, uh, and I won't necessarily touch too much on why, I'll probably make a video detailing this in uh, greater detail in the future, but basically multiple lines dilutes your commander damage and mono lines will cause your commanders to do more damage in practice basically through uh, active abilities so if I run this I will do more commander damage than uh, if I run this just as a very <laughs> short explanation with no reasoning behind it whatsoever uh, I'll do something in the future to explain that uh, so with that with bows rising to prominence they've dropped out of prominence a bit now but a lot of this mono stuff was to counter bows because you could not beat bows with two lines really, you had to fully commit and funnel as many stats and like, abilities into one line to overcome uh, bows, because bows aren't diluted at all. Uh, with base attack being introduced, with just higher scaling of attack and health stats generally, just from a greater availability of stats being thrown at me through castle awakening and things like that, Mono builds became the primary staple of what to build towards for where my account was being picked back up at. So I started testing a few things, seeing where I could make small tweaks here and there to push my account as far as possible with the least amount of investment, uh, which I assume uh, is what we're all looking for. And I found something quite interesting about how Salma's 4 star actually works, which I'd never seen anyone speak about before. So I might be wrong here, but in my experience, the general consensus on Salma's 4-star is that you get an extra active casting from your female commanders, basically. So, you know, at the start of the battle, female commanders have an 8% chance to use that active ability uh, one more time. So I, I think at least how most people envision this is uh, she'll proc commanders at one second, and then they'll just cast their actives normally throughout the fight, so you'll gain one additional active, and therefore do more commander damage through that. And I never even thought to question that, honestly. But when you actually look at reports, this isn't the case in practice whatsoever. The normal active sequencing for 4-star commanders, with the 4-star uh, awakening cooldown reduction on their actives, is 11 seconds, 21 seconds, 30 seconds, and um, 40 seconds. With Salma, you would assume it would be 1 second for those that she procs, and then 11, 21, 30, and then at 40, so you get a fifth active cast in. When you actually look at reports, so you see here, I'm running full female, uh, 1 second, 
Sama procs, she procs herself, Arya, and Andrea. Which means Layla and Lats did not proc at one second. So just keep that in your head. If you cycle through, they will cast as normal at 11 seconds, all of them together. Then at 21 seconds, all of them together. Once again. And then it will be at 30 seconds, all of them together. Slightly staggered into 31, okay. Uh, but then remember what didn't cast at one second. It was Lats and Layla. So if you look at 40 seconds, Lats casts her active, Layla casts her active. There is no uh, Salma, there is no Andrea, there is no Arya. So what this means in practice, Salma does not actually make your commanders use their actives more. What it actually does is gives you greater damage snowball in fights by causing the 40 second active timings to proc at one second instead. So especially with high budget female builds of Cersei, uh, especially if she hits into multiple lines so wildfire gets maximum value, uh, some will still obviously be amazing for causing you to fight fewer troops throughout the fight because that means you're, uh, they'll do less damage to you so through that you'll retain higher troop numbers yourself and therefore indirectly do more damage but you won't actually gain any active damage overall just from using Sama compared to not using her you will still cast just as many actives through the fight with or without her it just changes the sequencing of them slightly and because of this, I don't honestly know if this mechanic is intentional or not. Uh, but as a result of it, I think this is a big reason that bleed and weakness has power creeped female builds that do not have uh, Daniel Cersei. Because both of them interact way more beneficially uh, with one of the two primary enablers of the build than uh, the alternative builds. Sunel too, she also interacts with Salma way more uh, way better than the mid-spender females do, since Sunel is entirely built around snowballing as many actives as fast as possible. The one exception to this rule is 4-star Daenerys. If you look at reports of her, uh, without a proc, she will cast, or without a Sama proc at one second, she will proc at, at 8, there, and there will be 15 there, and then 22, there, and 29, there, and there will be 36, which is a grand total of 5 active castings, so Daenerys's 4 star ability reduces her active cooldown by 3 seconds, which brings it to 7 seconds rather than the base 10, so you get one more active in compared to normal through this. With the Salma proc, it changes it a bit. So it will be Salma procs, ba -ba -ba -ba. Grom is getting insanely lucky and everything is hitting. But there you go, Danny active hits at one second. And then it will be 11 seconds, the next one. I have no idea what just happened to my reports. Where is she? Yeah, Danny at 11, and that'll be 18. There, and then it'll be 25. There, then 32. There, and then it'll be 39. So you will get one additional active casting in with the Salma proc on Danny compared to a normal commander. So there is greater synergy there because you'll get six active castings rather than the normal five. So Daenerys is the exception to the rule. But for everything else, you will not gain additional active castings. So, I'm not saying Salma is bad necessarily. She can still be very good. For Spear and Cav builds, obviously she gives great stats passively. Her 4 star has great synergy with all the top uh, tier female commanders. It will have tangible value through damage snowball, as I said previously. But when you use her... 
and when you think about the value she brings to your lineup, just remember that outside of Four Star Danny, if you have her, your commanders will cast the exact same amount of actives throughout a fight, whether she is there or she is not there. And if you're running a mono imp build as full female, for example, where she's bringing no stats at all, because she's all cav, all spear stats, and a bit of total health, uh, you might want to at least test through like the new rebel groups or Relore's trial or something like that if there are alternatives that perform better than her, such as uh, hybriding Jamie into her spot and retaining a full female elsewhere, as an example, is just something to think about, if nothing else.